Is Exsanguinous a good item? Well, there's kind of a lot to talk about here. Let's go through this chronologically. We can start at the very beginning, when it was first added to the game. So this is March 2019, Alpha Patch 0.6.1. A strapping young man by the name of Ziggy D has a dream of adding an item to Last Epoch, the equivalent of Path of Exile's Chevron's wrappings. Why were people using it so often? So it wasn't the only way to build, it wasn't the only way to get good defenses, but very often it was the optimal way to get a big health pool and to get those big defenses, especially if you had any kind of intelligence synergy in your build, because that gives you extra ward retention. So before legendary items existed, before hybrid health, before endurance, before resistances were even in the game, back when protections and set affixes, things like glancing blows, ruled the game. You never built life back then. You pretty much only built protections. So let's pause here first and talk about what are protections. Protections don't exist in Last Epoch anymore, so we're just going to skim over this. Basically, a protection was something that multiplied your health versus a specific damage type. Eventually, these got replaced by resistances, things like poison resistance and fire resistance, so you can kind of think about protections in that way. There were also set affixes at the time, the same way that we currently have set items. If you have that set affix on multiple pieces of gear, you would get an extra bonus to go along with it. Those affixes would have things like plus protections to multiple damage types, and you were incentivized to include those set affixes across your build, pretty much no matter what you were playing. At the end of the day, you could still build protections with just health, but Exsanguinous turned your health into a bigger health pool with relatively minimal investment, especially if you had any kind of ward retention like the intelligence we already talked about. So let's fast forward to the first big power downgrade for Exsanguinous, and this is patch 0.7.8. We've got four things to talk about here. Exhibit number one, ward retention. If you take a look at the patch notes, you'll see that ward retention across the board has been reduced by 50% compared to the previous patch, 0.7.7. That's already a pretty sizable nerf, but let's get on to number two, skill changes. We'll pause for a moment and talk about the two classes that were primarily using Exsanguinous the most often because they had intelligence, and intelligence gave you that word retention. So this would be a Lich and any kind of mage build. Lich wanted the damage on low life nodes, and they used Exsanguinous in order to enable those nodes. Of course, they had the int synergy as well. Mage didn't necessarily care about being low life. There's nothing in Last Epoch like Pain Attunement, like Path of Exile has. But Flame Ward was primarily used as a source of ward generation more than it was used for damage reduction. Of course, I mention this because they've really changed a lot in this patch here. 0.7.8 saw two important changes for Lich and for Mage. The first is Death Seal which is a humongous source of damage, and it also removes all ward, and you can't really take advantage of the huge damage that Death Seal gives you if you're using Exsanguinous, because Death Seal removes all of your ward. So here's the trade-off. And the second change is Flame Ward. So Flame Ward's cooldown and duration and ward generation all got nerfed, but in exchange, Flame Ward got a buff to the damage reduction portion of it. The third change that came in this one specific patch is class-specific prefixes. Now, things like plus levels to skills didn't quite exist at this point, but if you wanted to use any powerful class-specific prefix, damage while wielding a bow, things like that, you simply don't have access to it, and you're giving up a big opportunity cost. You're using a unique item, and at this point, legendary items, the LP system does not exist. You just don't get that damage in your build. The fourth and final change that we saw introduced in patch 0.7.8 is health affixes. We now have access to hybrid health. And while this change isn't important to the conversation currently in patch 0.78, it will be important once we get to patch 0.8.1. Hold on, it'll make sense. So let's move on to our next patch here, and that's patch 0.7.10. Uh, protections got changed in a huge way. Remember, protections kind of multiplied your health pool versus a specific damage type. But now, in order to clean up the system a little bit, make it more similar to other action RPGs, a little bit more similar to Path of Exile in a way, they were replaced with resistances, and they were capped at 75%. As an aside, if you've ever wondered why stacking dexterity and intelligence and vitality and strength are all pretty good and reasonable things to do, why does attunement feel kind of lackluster? Why does it only give me two flat mana? 
Well, in patch 0.7.10, attunement got changed. Currently, it gives that 2 flat mana per point. Prior to this, it gave 4 elemental protection per point, which is a huge downgrade for any kind of attunement stacking build. This patch also removed many sources of damage reduction, and almost all set affixes have been removed. Now, if patch 0.7.10 removed a lot of damage reduction across the board, patch 0.8.1, our next patch to talk about, introduced a ubiquitous source of damage reduction that pretty much every build can take advantage of, and that's endurance. Before this point in time, endurance simply did not exist. So when Exsanguinous was super meta before patch 0.7.8, endurance didn't exist. But in this patch, in 0.8.1, endurance was added to the game. It's not quite the endurance that we have today. At first, endurance was a new attempt to add a secondary defense that players could add into their build. And it's funny, for one tiny patch that only lasted for 7 days, endurance existed, but you only got 40 flat endurance and then 2 per level. So you still had the 20% damage reduction, but you didn't really have much endurance threshold. You could build it on your gear, sure, but let's fast forward 7 days to the next big hotfix. Sure enough, in hotfix patch 081c, endurance became what we currently have in Last Epoch right now. This was set to 20% of your character's health, so as you build more health, you would also gain more endurance threshold dynamically. This is also the beginning of the current life meta in Last Epoch, where you pretty much stack as much life as you can if you're going for good defenses. Because endurance threshold scales dynamically with your maximum health, and as long as you're building percent health and hybrid health, you're going to hit the breakpoint very soon where building health is always optimal instead of building something like raw endurance threshold on your gear. For you lich appreciators out there, like myself, this is also the point where Death Seal became incredibly strong defensively to go along with the crazy damage that it already gave you. Death Seal liches lock their health very close to their endurance threshold already, so they pretty much always get to take advantage of the damage reduction up to 60% that endurance gives them. And that brings us to our last huge patch for Last Epoch, for the purposes of our conversation here, and that's patch 0.8.4. Druid got sweet new transformations. The crafting system got a complete overhaul, the first dungeon is introduced into Last Epoch, and for our purposes, legendary items are added to the game, along with the LP system. This is the only positive boost in power that we'll talk about when it comes to Exsanguinous, but it's also a boost in power to everything else in the game, so Exsanguinous doesn't quite keep up. Exsanguinous always had an opportunity cost of not wearing a normal body armor, which allowed you to have other prefixes and other suffixes. Now, you can add intelligence and vitality and health to your Exsanguinous to make up for the lack of other text on your Exsanguinous, but between the lack of endurance scaling, ward retention, and the general lack of a payoff for using Exsanguinous, it just doesn't quite hold up on the top tier builds. This brings us back to the initial question posed at the beginning of this video. Is Exsanguinous a good item? At the end of the day, no. It doesn't have a good payoff offensively or defensively to make it worth your body armor slot. But if your whole reason for watching this video is just to hear that answer, you probably would have watched the short version of the video instead of this one. So what else can we learn by going through this process? And I think we can actually learn two things here about what could change in the future of Last Epoch to make Exsanguinous a more meta, desirable item to include in your build. And thing number one is endurance. Endurance currently only applies to your red health bar, so any kind of ward isn't factored into your endurance at all. If we saw this change in some way, where endurance would factor into defenses on your ward in some kind of form or fashion, well, that would be exactly the kind of shift in defensive mechanics that would allow a ward-based defense, something like Exsanguinous, to really shine. A small example of what that might look like is taking a look at the base Primalist Mastery. There's a node called Berserker. It functions a little bit like endurance, but not quite, because it also applies to your ward. So if you are in low life and you're wearing Exsanguinous and you have a whole bunch of ward, that damage reduction from the Berserker node does kick in all the time. We've seen a couple builds like this. They're not all over the place, but one or two builds are able to make use of this mechanic. And the second change that could be added to Last Epoch in the future is something similar to Pain Entombment. Pain Entombment is one of the big payoffs for using a Chevron's Wrapping in Path of Exile. You click one node and you get a big more damage multiplier across your build. If there were something like that, if there were better offensive or maybe defensive payoff that you could spec into to take advantage of Exsanguinous, the, 
and to reward you for jumping through the extra hoops, then that would be a great thing that would maybe incentivize someone to include Exsanguinous in their build. Of course, talking about Path of Exile, there's another excellent reason for using a Sharon's Wrapping there, and that is just reserving as much of your life as possible to fit in more and more auras offensively and defensively. We don't quite have an analogy to that in Last Epoch, so let's skip that. And there you have it. After a series of patches and bug fixes and changes to mechanics in the game, Exsanguinous doesn't quite fit in the meta of top tier builds, but there are still one or two builds that can make use of it, it's just not really the meta chase item that it used to be. Special thanks to both Kavara and EHG Kane for helping me compile all the patch notes and bug fixes for the various patches from before I actually started playing Last Epoch so that we can get a complete chronological history of this item here. If you like seeing Last Epoch content like this pop up in your YouTube feed, something a little bit different than the normal build guide content that I put out otherwise, let me know. And let me know what your starter is going to be when March 9th finally rolls around for the 0.9 release, because I'm still waffling back and forth. I can't really make up my mind. I'm just going to steal one of your builds, okay? Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time.